Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. Fear, panic, and tension has engulfed IEBC. From some credible information, we have been made to understand that IEBC staff are being harassed to disclose who leaked 2022 presidential data to Azimio. The state is harassing the staff to disclose who leaked that data. And the information has also been confirmed by Azimio spokesperson, Professor Makao Mutua. In this video, I want us to have a look at a tweet shared out by the professor, for the tweet is going to give us an insight into the circus that is going on at IEBC. Professor Makao Mutua, what are IBC commissioners whose terms expired two days ago still doing at IEBC offices? There are reports that scores of IEBC staff have been abruptly fired in the past week. Democracy dies in darkness. That's the professor. In this video, as usual, I want us to dig deep into that tweet for Kenyans to understand what might be going on in IEBC as I talk, or rather at IBC. Before doing that, if you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. Why are IB staffs being fired? And what are retired commissioners still doing in office? As I talk, IBC has no commissioner. The only commissioner that is still there but suspended is Irene Masid. So technically, Irene Masid cannot discharge IBC duties as I talk. So the only person, in my honest opinion, who is running the affairs at IBC right now is the CEO, Hussein Marjan. And we all know that Hussein Marjan was in the Chebukati, Guli and Boyamulu team. This is a team that was accused by the Azimil Brigade of rigging the 2022 presidential election. And if any evidence can emanate that indeed that election was rigged, then the current CEO, Hussein Marjan, his goose is cooked. So naturally, Marjan and his team will go to some extreme lengths to make sure the truth does not come out. That's the actual truth here. And if at all there are any suckings going on at IEBC, the suckings are being carried out by Hussein Marjan, the CEO. That's coming out very clearly. And if you look at the events that have been going on within the commission, even before the election, it's very clear that IBC is seriously compromised. Long even before the election, if the same secretariat that referred to BBI as Burning Bridges Initiative, a term that was being used by BBI's opponents, William Ruto and his team, to refer to BBI and the handshake between Raila and Uhuru, Mwigai Kenyatta. And just some few days to the election, the IEBC CEO himself, Hussein Marjan, talked of hustlers, another term that was also being used by William Ruto and his team. So it's clear that IEBC, as I talk right now, 
is not independent. It's most likely compromised. And going forward with the kind of hatred that has developed at IEBC, hmm, I don't feel or even think Hussein Marjan should be left in office. If at all, there is some counter accountability or some fairness and openness to be realized <coughs> within the commission, then Hussein Marjan and his team must and should leave the commission. So it's clear the sackings are to silence any potential whistleblowers or to threaten hmm, those who have already leaked the information to keep them in silence or to threaten them. I believe, I believe that's the main reason and aim of the sackings. And for this retired or those commissioners who quit office, the mere fact that they are still there within IBC offices, that's a criminality. Mm. They are no longer employees of IEBC. So their continued stay in office is an illegality. And there is only one reason as to why most likely they are still in office. These are individuals whose terms expired just as the professor said two days ago. And last year, they were expected to proceed for leave, which they never did. What have they been doing in office all this time to a point their terms have even expired, but they are still in office? From where I sit, these, these retired commissioners, or rather these commissioners, I strongly believe that they are still trying to seal some loopholes that might be, or rather some loopholes that occurred as a result of 2022 presidential elections. I believe they are still sealing those loopholes. If at all rigging did take place, they are still, they are trying to make sure they cover on the footprints so that nobody can really discover the truth of what happened in the August 2022 presidential elections. But just as I've been saying here, IBC is a, a very big commission and uh, you cannot actually... Okay, the truth, <laughs> no, no matter what you do, the truth at one point will just come out. Mm. At one point, the truth will just come out. Whistleblowers are everywhere. So for the commissioners, in my honest opinion, I tend to believe they're just wasting time because the truth I know is already out. And as time goes by, more and more truths shall be revealed. And this is why I still maintain and I believe that Chebukati and his team might have willingly or deliberately read the 2022 presidential election to punish Raila and Uhuru Kenyatta. And again, if you look at it objectively, the only reason again why some staffs are being sacked instead of being promoted or being rewarded is because they might have exposed some hidden truths. Eh? Truths that, 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 truth that does not sit on one with the top leadership at IEBC. That can be the only explanation as to why they are being sacked. And that goes on to confirm that indeed 2022 elections were rigged. And also it goes on to confirm why we have been seeing the likes of Wafula Chebukati, Gulie, and Boya Mulu shouting at the rooftops hmm, that election that the state Uru Kenyatta tried to bribe them to rig the elections. Because honestly, I believe that if Uru Kenyatta's government had the intention of bribing Jebukati or even influencing 2022 presidential elections, if Uru Kenyatta, as the president, had that idea, then the Chebukati or even the, the commissioners who left 
could have not stopped the state. That's my take, ladies and gentlemen, on what is going on at IBC. Let me stop it there. But just as I did indicate when we were starting, if you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. If you want to support our forum, I've pinned my number on the comment section. Contact me through the number or feel free to channel your support to the number. Let's meet in our next analysis.